You have to read the history of slavery to understand this. There were two kinds of Negroes. There was that old house Negro and the field Negro. And the house Negro always looked out for his master. So back in 1963, Malcolm X had this speech he did called The House Negro and the Field Negro. And he pretty much broke down these two concepts. One is that the House Negro were the people that were inside the house, they were closer to master. And because they were closer to master, they were afforded certain privileges. And because they were afforded these privileges, a lot of them felt that they were better than the outside Negroes. And the field Negroes were those who were outside. They were the ones outside in the sun doing all the hard labor. They were the one grinding. They were the one that just saw the evil of Master while the house Negro felt that Master wasn't that bad. Just do what he says and everything will be all right. And of course, he was speaking on how that relates to us now. But check it out. I'll talk to you all after. During slavery, when black people like me talk to the slaves, they didn't kill him. They sent some old house Negro along behind him to undo what he said. You have to read the history of slavery to understand this. There were two kinds of Negroes. There was that old house Negro and the field Negro. And the house Negro always looked out for his master. When the field Negroes got too much out of line, he held them back in check. He put them back on the plantation. The house Negro could afford to do that because he lived better than the field Negro. He ate better, he dressed better, and he lived in a better house. He lived right up next to his master in the attic or the basement. He ate the same food his master ate and wore his same clothes, and he could talk just like his master, master, good diction. And he loved his master more than his master loved himself. That's why he didn't want his master hurt. If the master got sick, he'd say, what's the matter, boss, we sick? When the master's house caught a fire, he'd try and put the fire out. He didn't want his master's house burned. He never wanted his master's property threatened. And he was more defensive of it than the master was. That was the house Negro. But then you had some field Negroes who lived in huts, had nothing to lose. They wore the worst kind of clothes, they ate the worst food, and they caught hell. They felt the sting of the lash. They hated their master. Oh, yes, they did. If the master got sick, they prayed that the master died. <laughs> if the master's house caught a fire, they prayed for a strong wind to come along. This was the difference between the two. And today you still have house Negroes and field Negroes. Yeah. I'm a field Negro. So what do you think? You know, there's a lesson by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan where he says that at every door that leads to power, they have a sentinel. The rulers that be have a sentinel on watch. So in order for, for the house Negro to even be afforded that position, he had to be given that position. And although it maybe had greater pay, maybe it had greater value because he got better food. So there's some of our people who, although they may be in the position of power, they had to be selected. They had to be chosen. They had to be accepted by the powers that are already in power so that you can be a part of this. And that's just something to think about. But there's a lot of us who say that we're with Malcolm. We Malcolm, we Malcolm. But in reality, if Malcolm was here today, how many of us would rock with him? And if Malcolm was here today, how many of us would be classified as field Negroes and how many as house Negroes? Just something to think about. But y'all be blessed, be safe, subscribe for more. Let's keep building, family. Peace.